we are so pleased to welcome into the booth. That's President of Baseball Operations, David Stearns. David, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So you've been on the job, what, about five months now? Tell us about the overall feel about what you've done over those five months. I think at the, at the front end of any of these jobs, what you're really trying to do is get to know your organization. These, these are massive operations with really 300 people in baseball operations alone, not even counting the business side. So you're trying to get to know all the people, understand what we do well, understand where there are areas where maybe I can offer some perspective and, and help us move forward. And so I felt good that we've been able to, uh, we've been able to get a good start at that. Has there been a moment in these five months after spending nearly a decade in Milwaukee where you said, wow, this is different having sure. a job here with the Mets as opposed to with the Brewers. Yeah, it's almost every day. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a fundamentally different job. And yes, the, the subject matter is still baseball. The, what I'm responsible for is more or less still the same thing. But the different aspects of the job, there's clearly more media. There's more non-baseball stuff. It's a much bigger front office. Um, all of those things, I think, are, are, are very different. You feel it every day. You grow into it. Um, you adjust, you learn things every day. And so now, five months into it, I certainly feel more accustomed to it than maybe I did on day one. You know, when you go around to acquire players, there's analytics, there's information that can help you get the players that you would like. But when you try and hire a manager, it's almost more old school now where you still have to ask around and, and, yeah. and see the reputation, but also know that Carlos Mendoza has done just about every job that you could have in baseball. That works to his advantage, right? It, it certainly did. And, you know, he, this is, Mendy is not a guy that like snuck up on the baseball universe. I think people around baseball and front offices and certainly other coaches have known who Carlos has been for a long time. Um, he's been very well respected, whether it's his time in winter ball, his time in WBC, certainly his time as the bench coach for the Yankees. And so um, when I came in and started the managerial search, he was a name that was on the list from day one. And it was just a matter of going through the process, getting to know him. And I think we both felt from our first conversation, then our first Zoom, then our first in-person meeting, um, that we, we enjoyed the conversation. And that's so much a part of that relationship between a manager and a front office or a head of baseball operations is you just got to enjoy talking to each other and talking about the game and working through problems. Um, and I think we both felt that. Fly ball by Sanchez over toward the right field corner. That's going to stay in the park. So that that encompasses the human side of what you need to do as a president of baseball operations beyond the analytics. What about the idea of acquiring players with an eye toward guys who can handle what's different about New York. How do you go about figuring that part out? I don't think there's any science to that. I, I think it, it is trying to learn as much about the player's personality as you possibly can. Have they played in New York previously? That's obviously an indicator. If they haven't played in New York, have they played in other big markets that might be somewhat like New York, whether that's Boston, Philly, mm -hmm. um, maybe Chicago. Um, and if you can't check either of those boxes, you do what you can to, to understand who the player is. Have they performed in big games? Have they played in the postseason? Have they played when the lights have been bright? Because um, the lights are bright every single night <laughs> in New York, and, and you have to be able to handle it. And look, I, I don't think we're going to get that, that aspect of this right all the time. And I, and I think I understand that that's an added variable in choosing players for a roster that, that's really tough to know before you put the player on the team. You made one big free agent pursuit this offseason and came up short on Yamamoto. And then you've made the, the medium to small moves yep. since then. Can you explain to the fan base that wants the splashier moves why that's been your strategy? Absolutely. And I, I, I love the splashy moves, too. Um, <laughs> it's exciting to make those types of acquisitions. This is an organization that's done it in the past. We're going to do it again. Steve is very committed to supporting this team in any way possible. 
I think we have to do it when the time is right for the right player. Um, and there was an instance in this year where we made a, a very significant run at a premium free agent um, in Yamamoto. Clearly, we weren't able to get him um, because we thought that was the right player in the right situation. And I think going forward, there are going to be other right players in the right situation. And some of them we're going to be able to reel in and, and bring in, and others are going to choose other destinations as well. And that, that's part of it. But that we're in a situation where we can go toe to toe with every other team in baseball um, from a financial perspective is a huge advantage. And, and we're going to take advantage of that uh, when the time is right for the right players.